All right, so this is the second tutorial on transition states, and in this tutorial, we'll look at a different method. It's called QST2. Uh, the reaction that we will consider is the migration of hydrogen from carbon to nitrogen, like here. And the main steps of the, uh, this procedure are the optimization of reactants, the optimization of products, um, then the combination of these two optimized geometries to make the input for the transition state calculation. And the last step is also to verify that the TS that you've got corresponds to first order saddle point and nothing else. Um, so I already optimized the geometries of my um, reactant. And this is the geometry of my um, product. You'll notice here that I don't have a triple bond that I should, but this is just um, a Vogadro internal bug and it's just a visual representation. So if you verify the length of this bond length, it actually corresponds to triple bond, so it's fine. Uh, so what happens next? The next step is to take these geometries and to make the input for the next calculation. Uh, and you would need to, to adjust your um, input as follows. When you go to format here, you have to select not Cartesian, but Z matrix. Okay, and copy paste this part into the notepad for both uh, reactants and products. And it would start looking something like this. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see. All right, so this is the Z matrix corresponding to the um, reactant and this is the J, uh, Z matrix corresponding to the product. Now why do you need to change this format? That is because Z matrix corresponds to internal coordinates of your molecule while Cartesian correspond to uh, you know like a reference point in space. So what can happen if you use Cartesian is that your two molecules overlay and then the program gets confused. So don't confuse Gaussian. Um, now the, uh, the other important part is that you need an empty space between the product and the reactants and you need your of course command line. And the last tricky thing is that the order of atoms in the reactant and in product has to be the same. Okay, so here I have carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and here I have nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen. It doesn't work. So you have to change either the top one or the bottom ones to have carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, or whatever, which one you pick. That's why I named this try one incorrect. And the correct one would be like this, so you have nitrogen, carbon, uh, hydrogen, and same thing in the bottom. Of course, that means that you have to change these values here, okay? But it's quite easy to, to understand how this works. Basically, the first atom has no labels to it, and all the other ones have um, this code type of thing. So carbon is linked to atom 1 with bond length b1 and b1 has value like this and angles are named a1 a2 etc etc okay so you'll have to to move atoms around and you end up with having this input like this and of course uh, your opt keyword needs to have a parameter and it's going to be qst2 all right so now we're ready for the transition state calculation and the output of this is this. <laughs> okay, so it looks like so. So basically what happens is that Gaussian combines the reactants where hydrogen is here with the products where hydrogen is here and finds something in the middle. However, if you do a frequency calculation with this geometry, and I already did that. And these are the frequencies that you get. You get two negative frequencies. Okay, what does that mean? That means that this is not first order saddle point. 
I'm just gonna show you what are the frequencies that you get. So this corresponds to the migration of hydrogen further away from nitrogen, right? And this corresponds to uh, hydrogen moving away from carbon. But this is not the transition state of this reaction, okay? However, what's good about this is that now I have a better idea of what it should look like. And I can sort of play around and figure out the real transition state. So I know that hydrogen should be somewhere here and maybe I can alter this distance or the angle or something like this. And it took me several tri trials but um, I ended up guessing right. And so this is what the transition state that I got looks like. It took a minute to load. Okay, so what happened is that for the first order transition uh, settle point, you needed to have the bond between carbon and nitrogen a bit longer. So now it looks more like a double bond, actually. And uh, hydrogen was way too far in the uh, the QST2 um, model. That's why it was second order. So this has only one negative frequency. Let's check it out. Okay, so it's this one. And is the frequency corresponding to uh, the movement of hydrogen away from nitrogen and to finally bond with carbon. Alright, so I got this transition state from um, the result of my first QST2, alright, and then I performed the TS calculation as before, and I'll just show you the input for this one. Right, so it's the normal optimization with the mod redone keyword, and so I froze the bond between um, hydrogen and carbon. Right, that's from the, the tutorial right before this one. And that's it. That's the end of this one. So as you can see, sometimes it can take several trials to, to get the actual geometry, but um, at least the QST2 can give you a better idea of what it should look like and then you can apply other techniques to, to pinpoint the, the real geometry. So this is it.